I'll tell you what I got. I got a venereal disease. Yep. Apparently that little mall elf, she was a bit more jolly than I realized. But, you know, you live and you learn. <laughs> You're listening to the Paraskeptics Cryptozoological Special, starring Wade and Dalton. This week's special guest, a legend in the cryptozoological field. This guy's an explorer, adventurer, discoverer, and anything else that has a rer at the end of it. He does it all. He writes books. Who doesn't? Be prepared to learn. This week on Paraskeptics. Good evening, Skeptos. That's right, it's the Paraskeptics. We're back where we don't question the paranormal. We question the paranormal community. Hey, your sister say anything about me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll sweat you. Hey, no, but welcome back, Skeptoids. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, I am Dalton. I'm Wade. And we got a very special show for you tonight, folks. We are going to be talking to a cryptozoological master. Yeah, we we're not good at interviews, but uh, this guy came out of the woodwork, literally, and and he's uh, willing to talk with us about anything crypto. So uh, that's right, because you know us. We said we weren't doing any more interviews, right? Because you know we don't like any of you enough to talk to you. But this guy contacted us. He said, "Look, I really dig what you guys are doing." He said, "I understand you probably you guys probably get laid a lot." So, you know, as crypto maniacs, we don't get a lot of poon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he wanted to run with the skeptics. He wanted to talk to the skeptics. And, we are poon magnets. <laughs> and we're going to ring him up right now. The great, <laughs> the great, the great Emmett Mandrake. Emmett Mandrake. Cryptozoological wonder. He's so far underground, he's practically deceased. <laughs> and you probably don't know about him. You'll have to look him up because you're not, you're not in the know like we are. The cryptozoological world has made every effort to try and discredit this gentleman from what he's told us. And uh, we know about as much about him as you do. <laughs> so we're going to learn ourselves. We thought, what the hell, why not? So let's get him on the line. Let's talk to the uh, apparently famous Mandrake. Okay, we got him. I'm ringing him up right now. Right now. Come in, Ghost Rider. Hey, is this Emmett Mandrake? This is Emmett Mandrake, okay. correct. Guess what? We are live on the air. Not really live, but you know. Oh, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really do live stuff. Emmett Mandrake, welcome to the Periskeptics Podcast. I am Dalton. How are you doing, Dalton? I'm doing fine, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for contacting us. Yeah, we well, really are uh, honored to have you on the show because this is, it's it's rare for us to have uh, to interview anybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because we don't like people. So with that being said, <laughs> well, that's a that's a that's part of being a cryptozoologist. You don't like people either. I understand that. So tell us a little bit about yourself. We understand you uh, you're kind of underground in the cryptozoological world. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I like to keep it that way. Uh, it uh, saves a lot of hassle of people just talking to you and then getting after you and asking you just a bunch of dumb fucking questions. Uh, <laughs> like what we're about to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, this is this is all good. This is uh, you guys. Uh, you guys come highly recommended. Uh, actually, I uh, frequent your podcast on a uh, on a on a, on a semi regular basis. <laughs> I told you. You're one of the lucky 25 (laughs) that listen to us. Yes. 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 Hey, uh, it's like I say, literally uh, dozens know you. So that's uh, it's always a good thing. (laughs) 
well, good luck with that. So, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, yeah, so tell us a little bit about what got you into the crypto, what got you into the cryptozoological world, there, uh, Mister Man Dark. <laughs> well, um, it's just out of morbid curiosity per se. Uh, uh, the cryptozoological world is always fascinating. Just the simple fact that uh, uh, most of it is just based on unfounded shit. So uh, someone saw this, or I always get the story of, man, in my area, there is, and it's from, you know, it could be from Bigfoot to the Chupacabra to the Jersey Devil, depending on what area you're in. And I've been all over the U.S. from, you know, from Oregon to Florida to Maine to California and everywhere in between. So I've got my uh, my share of people talking to me about this just what's in their area and it's it's usually over something like you're at breakfast and you hear people talking and then uh, me being me i like wow tell me a little bit more about this and then you say well uh i think i want to investigate that a little bit more and uh that's how i got into it so now, it's funny you mentioned that because I can relate because I, too, have had breakfast before. So that's very interesting. <laughs> Me and breakfast? Yeah, we, we, all, we all get along just fine, don't we? <laughs> Us and Man, food. It's, it's good. To, it's good to have. <laughs> yes, I, I, I've enjoyed it many. I enjoyed it today, as a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying it right now. Oh, very see, good. I, I typically I record the show uh, while I'm eating, and I'm on the toilet at the same time, so it all oh, washes through, and it's and I, 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 I get more energy that way. It's the beauty of multitasking. That's We're all it. about streamlining processes here on the skip. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, we understand that you've written some books. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, they've uh, the book is always uh, books are always a, a it's an, it's a constant evolution, and I've written a few. On uh, just little, uh, you know, about stuff that, you know, I probably really even shouldn't be talking about just because of the fact that uh, there might be some sort of agencies or, or people that really don't want to know that this stuff is known or want it to get out. See, that's that's something that w- we were curious about is, it, you know, you, you for one thing, you hear stories about uh, cre- creatures like Bigfoot, but then... You know, or you know, people, it's like something like just a vague sighting story. But then there's some people that come out and have like these stories of seeing a Bigfoot on a property and then black helicopters uh, at, oh, on the yeah. same day. Is that, is that something that happens on a, you know, like, is that, I mean, does that happen pretty often? Are those reports well, out there? Anytime there's a, 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 a mass cryptozoological event, uh, so it's to say that uh, you have to see these, these town meetings and things like that, and people will say, yeah, I saw uh, yeah, what, what I thought was a Bigfoot around, and then a half hour later there were helicopters there and people with dark glasses and suits on asking us about what we saw and then threatening us if we tell anyone. I mean that stuff happens. Uh, that's 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 real life. So uh, yeah, that that stuff is uh, is constantly going on, and uh, uh, it's not hard to hard to find it if you're looking. But put it that way. Gotcha. That's <laughs> that's something that um, that's just real freaky. I mean, it's like who who can you trust? You can't trust the you can't trust these creatures, and you can't trust these people that are uh, coming up at the same time with these creatures. I don't no, get it. No, the, the creatures. Yeah, those, those you can't trust them all because they're they're damn hard to find. They don't they don't make the job any easier for sure. And I'll tell you what, I've always thought Sasquatch looked a little rapey. He, uh, <laughs> I'll tell he, he you does. what, he looks like he looks like he'd get hands on with you real quick. I, I, I don't doubt that. Uh, he's he's just one of those macho looking types that uh, just you got to bend to his will if you know what I mean. Well, well, well there's the, that's something that brings up a question. Now, there's a lot of techniques that some of these hunters use. I mean, there's some clowns out there on TV doing you know whatever, and uh, but do you have like any kind of um, special uh, approach to uh, approaching these creatures, you know, I don't. Yeah, yeah you know, in, in the in the approach uh, department, uh, it's all about environment. So, you know, if you're looking for a, a, a creature in a swamp, uh, you just can't just go out one night and said, "Well, I'm just going to 
strap this flashlight on my head and 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 see if I'm one of these creatures that's going to pop out and and try to scare me. You, you got to get in there. You got to be you got to be one with it. See, so you got to get out there and you got to spend some time. You got to get out there if you're going into a swamp. You got to you got to basically, for lack of better term, you got to put the swamp on you. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Hey, I've heard about putting some stank on it. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah. <laughs> very similar. Any t- any time you can get out there and and be one with the environment, and you know you gotta you gotta rummage around a little bit because you know these creatures uh, they have heightened senses, so you really gotta be. Uh, you, you gotta kind of camouflage yourself into their environment because if you walk out there smelling like fucking head and shoulders and right guard they're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pick you up right away right so and you know i can kind of vouch for what he's saying because i remember one time my cat got in the garage and i couldn't get the little bastard out right so i'm poking at him with a stick and i'm like hey you little bastard get out of there and it didn't work so i said you know what I heard something on one of these cryptozoological shows about pheromones, right? So what I did is I came up here and I dumped out the litter box and I just rubbed dried up cat piss all over my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this that, guy, man, that cat came out of there like a bat out of hell. So there's something to it. There's something there's to something. it, yeah. As, as, as crazy as it may seem, uh, I mean, uh, you, you can get as crazy as you want. If you can, uh, if you get out there and you got to spend the time, if, you just can't. You got to spend a couple of days. I'm, I'm talking, you know, get out there and. You, you, you gotta you gotta eat what they eat you gotta drink what they drank you gotta you gotta do what they do or what you think they're gonna do so uh and uh sometimes it's uh it, it can get a little crazy so to be- i ain't gonna lie so to capture the creature you must become the creature oh you got you gotta, you gotta get in the creature mindset you know these yeah. these things that uh, people don't see them they're, you don't see a lot of these things you know walking through kroger you know and there's a reason why they don't want to be seen so I don't know. I don't know. If you you get into this Kroger here, boy, I don't know. (laughs) So so tell me something. In all your cryptozoological travels, um, Mm -hmm. what are what are some of the craziest stories you've heard? Well, you know, they uh, there's a there's if you if you go through the the Tennessee area. Um, if you get back in the in the in the woods, you know Tennessee is a, a, a great state. It's a beautiful state, um, but the the further you get away from civilization, the the more interesting the conversation becomes, and the more interesting the people become. You know, he's and, talking uh, Antioch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, the, the, a, a one I've been I've been running into on a, an actual a frequent occasion is the the story of the wampus cat. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah, if you that actually that you can uh, you can look up some wampus cat up. You can it's you can you can Google that stuff and it's on there. And uh, but the wampus cat, you know, a, a, a big, you know, predatory cat that uh, that roams around uh, just doing what it wants and eating what it wants and basically terrorizing the the, the local folk. And uh, on more than one occasion. Um, I hear about the sightings of it, and the people, they are genuinely afraid to, to go in the woods at night because they're in fear of a, literally, a large predatory cat, like a black cat or a, or a you know, a panther, if you will, roaming the woods of, uh, of, of Tennessee. And uh, myself, uh, that's, that's, that's high on my, uh, that's high on my list to, uh, to get some real evidence on, and, uh, uh, I tell you, I, I, uh, as many people have talked about it, there's got to be something to it. I mean, you, you hear about the old mass hysteria, you know, people, you can, you can talk anybody into thinking they saw just about anything, but these people are genuine. So, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the weirdest thing. Cause it just, you know, you see people, you, know, you see the, 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 uh, other crazy shows on the town meetings and stuff like that and and uh you, you know that's uh that that's the, the the mob mentality but man you get a couple of these people just they're genuinely talking about just this i seen this damn thing in the woods and it scared the bejesus out of me so that's uh that that's the that's the oddest one i've heard in recent times but you, have you um have you had any uh luck or are you uh, looking uh, like? Are you putting out any kind of uh, game cameras or anything to you know to try to find to get I some kind some, of photographic evidence of this? Absolutely, I, I have. I am actively pursuing this one uh, um, on a couple of locations that uh, I've been given permission to go on. 
by by the good people. Uh, I have game cameras out. Uh, I have uh, bait out. I can't disclose what that bait is, but uh, I got some special what i think would be a very attractive uh, morsel for a wampus cat we talking <laughs> snickers milky way but oh, yeah. well it's how you, it's how you procure it you got to you know these things typically they if they're a predatory animal they're they're looking for another animal so you got to procure another animal for them so uh-huh. it, so i'm not i'm not you know giving any other detail aside from if you drive along the road and you have a shovel with you you can usually pick up some stuff real easy so it's a baby and um, the uh, oh no, what? <laughs> the, uh, the that's science, people. It is. It is. You know, crypto bait. You you, Crypt- you, you crypto bait is right. That's a that's a good term for it. We're gonna be selling so you heard that here, stuff. folks. If you're out in the woods and you're trying to pet the hot kitty, you're gonna want a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, the, the, way, the way they talk about these things uh, eating their dogs and uh, killing their horses and and uh, stuff like that, uh, boy, oh, yeah. uh, m- many a person said, uh, I don't know how you feel about guns, but if I was in in the woods, I'd definitely have one. So, you know, because obviously the, the, the wampus cat will give you plenty of, of warning as it's running up behind you. You can shoot it with something. Yeah. <laughs> I would check to see how many teeth these people had. Well, <laughs> they, 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 they're, uh, they, they do have su- they have summer teeth. Su- some are there and some are not. In so. Tennessee, I don't believe it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, yeah, it's uh, it's. But I, I love those stories, and uh, there, there's other ones out here from. Uh, you know, you hear about, uh, I mean, the Ozark Howler and, you know, the Dover Demon and all the, all the crazy things that, uh, that, uh, that people see and that the, the stories have been passed down for generations. And see, that's the beauty about cryptozoology is, you know, anything is possible or nothing's possible. You know, at, at the very least, you better, you better have a little bit of knowledge about wildlife and all that to be, uh, you know, a credible person. You know, a lot of, uh, us cryptozoologists, you're, you're, for, you're for at the, at your core, you're a wildlife biologist. So. Okay, folks, a quick commercial break, and then we're back. You're listening to the Paraskeptics podcast, brought to you by the Paraskeptics Online School of Automatic Painting. That's right. You, the listener, can pay the Paraskeptics a small fee of seven hundred and fifty dollars for a one-week automatic painting class. Even if you don't know how to paint, we will teach you how just like that. I mean, you might as well, right? I mean, you're stupid as fuck anyway. Now, I'm going to I've gotten to play devil's advocate here because um, you know, that's just what we do here on the Skeptics podcast. Cryptozoologist is a made-up title. So, with that, with that being said, what are you really? Are well, you a zoologist? Are you a biologist? Are you a botanist? Are you, are you a sideshow freak? I don't know. Well, you, um, actually, you know, the, the background is in actually wildlife biology, interestingly enough. Uh, I, I grew up... Uh, in, in the woods, not not as a wild man, but as a, I, you know, yeah, oh, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I could have been, but uh, the, uh, um, the 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 base of it is, it, you, you, if you're in the woods a lot and you study animals and you, you actually go to school for some of this stuff, uh, at some point you can you can earn a degree as a wildlife biologist. So um, th- that uh, actually uh, removes a lot of the a lot of the BS uh, at, that people see and. They'll, they'll they'll try to feed you on these animals because the majority of things and you guys already know this because well that's why you're paraskeptics you know it, I love your tagline don't doubt the paranormal doubt the paranormal researcher right well cryptozoology is a whole lot of the same thing you got it wrong but no that's fine continue <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um um it, but I, I've, I've spent a lot of time in the woods, a lot of time out in remote areas, and you know, if if, if anyone would have saw something like this, you'd think I would have saw something to uh, to really uh, spur on something crazy, other than seeing black bears and 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 lynx and and regular regular animals, you know. So yeah, yeah. Now, Where'd you go to school at? Um, 
BYOB. Ah, indeed. <laughs> that, that place. There's the, they have they have a. I hear that they now now you pioneered some some uh, stuff in your research, and uh, and uh, anybody out there you could Google Emmett Mandrake and find some of his uh, gear. Um, but uh, you you make your own like uh, do it yourself traps. Uh, oh, absolutely. That, for, that's part of it for the yeah, yeah. certain creatures. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, my. Uh, um, I, I like to keep, like I said, on the education thing. That's I, I keep my my alma mater a low profile because you know once they find out that you can you can lead the path to to, to you know to, to my level of success, you know I just don't want to flood that place with a bunch of bunch of people wanting to go there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that <laughs> makes total sense. This is a, this is an exclusive kind of a deal. So, but uh, getting to traps and stuff, you can. Uh, uh, the, the traps are, are, you know, other than your regular snares, you know, you can use the, the old, you know, piano wire and, a, and a, some peanut butter type of deal, uh, all the way up to some, you know, some really, really complicated Kajavis devices that, uh, that uh, you know, I, and I, I've seen um, other, other people make these type of, of traps on other said uh, programs that are elaborate and, and, and may or may not be really what you should be doing to try to catch a, a, a cryptozoological or a cryptic animal. So um, as far as um, you can actually take a lot of, a lot of it's fecal based. And so you, you make a fecal trap, right? Fecal traps are like one of the best traps ever because what another animal wants to do is smell another animal's poo. That's hey, they're so you, they're my kind of say, creature. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, back in back in my college days, that was a wild weekend. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, is it true? I was I was I was doing a little bit of research. There's not a lot out there, but is it true that you once tried to catch a grizzly bear in a butterfly net? Um, that may or may not be true. It was a big net, though. Indeed. <laughs> and, and, and it didn't work out either. I also tried to, uh, in, in my younger days, uh, um, y- you watched a little too many movies and uh, like Rambo and stuff like that. And if you said, oh, man, you remember the part where Rambo jumped out of the tree and s- stabbed that big hog and had something to eat, right? Oh, yeah. That, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> At all. <laughs> you mean... You mean you can't just stand there and wide open and jump no, on you, a pig? You, you, I can't. I can't. You know, you, you'd think something like that just because you see it in a movie it would work. It, yeah. it, it really doesn't. You have to get all up. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta soak yourself in the in the mud and and put the <laughs> the booby trap up high and tell them to come on, kill me. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I hear what you're saying. I. Uh, but yeah. Um, there's a lot of people out there that just they, they go about it wrong, and uh, you got to get out there. You got to spend some time. I mean, you just can't go out and and expect to drag some cameras with you and see something in one night and then proclaim some place is a is a is a is a habitat for a cryptic. Yeah, yeah, and, and now to, to help you out, you know, we we did. You do sell some of your kits, right? Your traps. Yeah, I, I do, and uh, but uh, you know, I'm working on an getting them on amazon and amazon prime but uh boy they uh they're, they're a little they're a little uh tight on their their rules for uh, such apparatus especially if things are 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 sharp and and uh can can really hurt somebody if you don't use them right so. yeah uh, well, well, they're kind of down on sweatshop labor nowadays too so you yeah, gotta take that ah uh, yeah so because when you're getting that stuff manufactured uh in in overseas you know they just they just uh it's it's kind of hard to get your get your product in into market uh, in an effective way. <laughs> but, uh, speaking, speaking of which, a pair of skeptic shirts coming real soon. Yeah. Oh, so, that, so, well well placed. As <laughs> soon as we can get those damn Cambodian kids back in that factory, we're going to be right on schedule. And in, in, yeah, in, in, in the world, there's a there is a Scotch tape shortage too. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. Uh, so, but yeah, yeah, that's that's really now. <clears throat> You had told us that you were kind of blacklisted in the paranormal community. Well, not the paranormal, cryptozoological. Excuse me. Why is that? Well, I, I'm I'm a bit of a I'm a I'm a bit of a rebel, a bit of a rogue. Um, I, I I do things unconventional, um, and I, I uh, 
I call a lot of people out on the, 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 the bullshit when I see it, but you know, it's, it's, you, you should never really discount anybody's story just because you think it, you got to do a little bit of a research, but, uh, uh, I, uh, I I tend to stir up people a little bit too much when I when I'm calling them out on the crazy shit. So yeah, I heard that you uh, had a little run in with Matt Moneymaker. You know, me, me and Moneymaker, you know, we, we don't see eye to eye on some stuff because I mean, you're you, taller. You, you, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 four inches taller than he is, but uh, yeah, but uh, his uh, his last name uh, really says it all, don't it? Yes, it uh, that, that that's something that we've stressed to a lot of the the listeners, but they, they don't want to listen. I don't know what we call no. listeners, but well, you know, it, it's a. Uh, I mean, is does it bring? It's all about bringing awareness. Is he is he in an indirect? God bless his his little heart. Is he bringing awareness <laughs> to some of this stuff? Absolutely, right. You know, when they're when they're doing all their stuff and they're looking for whether it be Bigfoot or. The, you know the windigo or the a skunk ape or whatever hey i you know i hey I, i'm i watch that stuff too but i look at that guy and and uh you know in the conversations that we've had uh you know me and him just we don't see eye to eye on some things and uh i just you know you, you want to keep it civil but uh sometimes he gets a little on the crazy side and uh, i i just don't want I, I don't i don't need that in my life so uh I, well, you, the one thing i can't say about money makers i have to give him credit because he, he really put that, that bull dyke on TV, whatever her name is, and that really broke ground. The Martians have two sexes, like we do. It was really oh, groundbreaking that he put her out there. And then you've got the other guy that's like Lenny from Of Mice and Men. I'm retarded. What's wrong with you? You know he's kind of <laughs> retarded, but at the same time, he puts him out there on TV. And that's that's good. That's good on Moneymaker. I, you know, I'm all for helping out the bull dykes and the retards. <laughs> but at the same time... I really feel like Moneymaker's been involved in just one too many scandals. I mean, he, he kind of backed those guys that had the Halloween costume in the freezer with the with the deer guts. And oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, that that really gives the old cryptozoological community a a fucking black eye. That's for sure. It does. It puts some taint in your taint, is what it does. It, it, it taint. Yeah, well, that's, see, uh, I, I I would agree with that. I, I, I'm thinking this is something I don't think that has been addressed, and I don't know if they've done any DNA test on that outfit that was in the freezer but i think what happens is he did kill somebody he shot somebody that was faking a bigfoot sight <laughs> he killed the fucking hoaxer ditched the body and he's like oh shit maybe maybe people believe that this is a real bigfoot i'll put it in the freezer so he's uh, he got away with murder so hey i don't know that's that, just that, a theory i'm putting it he out did. there the conspiracy he single-handedly <laughs> killed the cryptid show genre <laughs> yeah, I, I I could agree. Yeah, he could he could have figuratively, figuratively, and and literally uh, uh, committed murder. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so, a, it's a damn tragedy. It, it is because because you know the the field is it's a fantastic field you know to to be in, but uh, if you if you got all these you know donut punchers doing crazy shit like this, how how the hell are you gonna? have any sort of credibility to any of this so see and that's what we're, we're all about we're all about credibility per per se yeah pretty much indeed now we understand you were busted for acid a while back well uh, I, that, that, that speaking that is, of credibility now that, that, that is Colin? that is pure conjecture and i i can't uh, admit or deny any any such charge because uh my records have been sealed i see <laughs> but it, well, to, well tell Tell Ryan Buell we said hello. The, okay. The, um, there was one thing that we were uh, curious about. Uh, um, yes, the phenomenon yes, yes. that was really like it, there was a huge, huge sightings and, and, and you, you heard you, there were a lot of sightings of this cryptid. A lot of people probably didn't even realize it was a cryptid, but you used to see it. I mean, literally everywhere. And like I said, I don't, I don't believe people really understood how rare, how, how just out there this thing was. And it seems like sightings dropped off. Uh, you know, in recent times. But with that being said, I was interested to get a real cryptozoologist take on um, if they've heard of any recent sightings of the Wigger. We understand that they were sort of a chimera. They they look one way, but they mimic other other styles. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, kind of like a uh, like a ghetto doppelganger. 
I know you've got to go back under deep cover, uh, under the woods and the thickets and, and, and brush and all that good stuff. But uh, Oh, you, absolutely. Can you tell the listeners when your uh, new book uh, is uh, due out and the uh, title? I, t- I, I tell you, um, the book is in process, and uh, the working title is Cryptids Everywhere. And uh, it's just oh. a book about... It, the whole thing is uh, it's very ambiguous, but it talks about there, there's cryptids literally everywhere. We're just uh, we just we're, we got to be able to know what to look for and where to find them. And uh, I, I'd say in the next uh, it, it's uh, it's going to be in the next 12 months. Uh, this thing is going to be hot, too. It, it's going to it's going to shoot to the top. Uh, it, it's going to expose a whole bunch of stuff that uh, that uh, um that you really didn't even hear about before. And uh, a lot of it's uh, very, uh, very conspiracy like in nature as far as government projects. And, you know, a lot of the, the cryptid uh, stuff uh, uh, is tied to uh, it's, it's government experiments. I, I, I'm not going to lie. That's about as much as I can say without uh, without getting a, with, uh, a trace on this call. So it's Dr. Moreau it. shit, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And because uh, I mean, um, when when you when you when you start uh, dealing with subterranean stuff and and cross bond stuff, yeah, uh, you'd be surprised what c- comes out of the woodwork if uh, if you know what I mean. So, oh yeah, the th- uh, you, you get like a bunch of uh, bull dyke retard looking creatures coming out of the woods. I, yeah, I tell you, I wouldn't mind you know after this call. I had an idea, a pretty good idea, a cryptid related idea for a book, and I've, I've been kind of curious on how to get it out there, maybe who to pitch it to. It's going to be a review of 70s porn flicks called Squatch Crotch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, it's I, I, it's I, an I, idea I had, you know, back before shaving was in, but Squatch Crotch. <laughs> and it's. <laughs> We'll talk more Sorry. about that later. But. I, I, th- I, th- I think I'd like to hear more about that, and uh, and, and uh, if you could forward me any pictures, uh, I, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to analyze some evidence. Well, there was uh, another well, uh, research. Book. Research gets a little hairy, but we'll see what we can do. About it. Well, it's like <laughs> the uh, it's like the, the the furry monster holes and the men that love them. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so my. in your in your in your reporting, I'm sorry, but before we let you go, I got one more. Have you ever heard reports of Bigfoot having sex with cows? You know, um, I have, and that was uh-huh. from uh, uh, where did I hear that? Um, that was from something other. Uh, uh, it was from another cryptid researcher that had uh, had reported eyewitnesses of actual Bigfoots and or Sasquatch type creatures uh-huh. actually. Uh, having a uh, carnal relations with uh, animals of different species that uh, that may or may not been willing uh-huh Let's see cattle rape uh-huh. cattle maybe some maybe some uh, yeah, any sort of domesticated animal you never know uh I say uh, uh, you know, Squatch is a big guy. He 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 ain't afraid to wrestle it that's for sure I told, I, 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 told you, you, I told you that shit's happening Old- yeah, because I was going down the road the other day, and I saw this raccoon, and he was just busted open from the ass end. And I was thinking, <laughs> there is no way that a car could do that. I'm telling you what, I think it could have been squatch rape. Ne- next time you see that, I-, I want you to t- I want you to take a picture of it, and I want you to send it to me. Yeah. And see, I think what they're doing, the government is hiding this shit, because they're trying to tell you that possums will eat carrion from the ass out. Let's say that they go in through the anal cavity and they eat the inside. I think that's bullshit. I think what they're doing is they're trying to hide nefarious activity by clans of Bigfoot that are living out in the, in the woods. Uh-huh. And they know if you're going out there, there's a chance you could get ass pounded. It's some kind and of I, it's some kind of Bigfoot gangland uh, ritual, and you don't want to be caught is. in it. And I tell right. you, at, at the size of one of those things, you, you see how just tall they are and how muscular they are. God knows what their reproductive organs look like. Oh my God! <laughs> the sky's the limit. The, the sky is the limit. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been an enlightening, enlightening interview. And uh, Emerald Lagasse, we want to thank you for coming out, and talking to us. It's, uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Uh, I uh, I love you guys. Uh, I love your show. Uh, listen to it all the time. Uh, 
it's uh it's been an honor to be on and uh um I'm going to continue my research, and uh, I'm I, I'm sure in the future I'll have more stuff to report, and uh, I can keep you uh, uh, abreast on the on how the book's coming too. Hey, well, thanks a lot. I, I'm, I'm, we'll definitely keep in touch with you, and we'll definitely keep keep tabs and keep the uh, viewers uh, updated. Uh, you just let us know when we can update because we don't want to give away your whereabouts, but we'll keep the uh, listeners. Uh, cued in on what you're doing and all that stuff and we might get you back on here i love it i appreciate it guys uh this is a this is a um a thankless job but uh, you guys uh you, you put a little sunshine on it today so i really appreciate it awesome. well, fantastic <laughs> we want to give a special a nonzy dick slap to emmett mandrake Emmett Mandrake, thank you, sir, for coming on the Periskeptics podcast. It was a lot of fun. You opened up a lot of eyes. And you got, and you learned us, because uh, there's always some new stuff to find out about the crypto uh, world. And, uh, and, <clears throat> and speaking of Anansi dick slaps, we do want to give Anansi dick slaps to the, all the listeners out there that liked our Goatman's Bridge comments that we posted up on Twitter about the Ghost Adventures episode that was so fucking bad. Um, That's right. Shoutouts to Wade on that one because Wade was on top of it because I don't watch that <laughs> yeah, shit. Cause... I forget. You, I see, I, I, I'm like, uh, I, 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 I asked you, hey, are you watching this? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because Wade, Wade will shoot me a text <laughs> once every every couple of days. Are you watching? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I, I, it's like they're so stupid. I I, I, I want to not watch them, but now they're so fucking stupid. I gotta watch them because it's like, can they surpass the stupid? And they do. And, they break it. We, before we go, we've got to tell you about the latest one. Ghosts in the Hood. Oh, yes. Yes. Now I'm going to say that again in case you missed it, Skeptoids. Ghosts in the Hood. You heard it right. You, you just think on that one. Sit on it. And let that shit simmer in your brain for a little bit. Yeah, let it soak into your face. It, it's like... Uh, Mm. <laughs> yeah, so that's why we said we can't wait for Vato Homie Ghosts in the Barrio. <laughs> <laughs> we want Weed TV to make that shit happen. No. And don't act like we're fucking racist because we're not. No. Motherfucker, I mean, that's the shit that's on TV. We didn't make it up. No, that's right. Fucking, fucking Ghosts in the Hood. Hey, you want to see a dead body? <laughs> and like, and. <laughs> You know, like I said, you know, if you're at, going that route, then then move a, move ahead with uh, the uh, idea of uh, a show called Tiny Hauntings, where you uh, are investigating a ghost of uh, I don't know dead midgets, or uh, or you're <laughs> or you're investigating uh, hauntings that take place in tiny homes, because you know, people bring, are downsizing now. Which brings up a good point, and we may need to get into this on the next show. How come you never hear about odd ghosts, man? Like, when's the last time you heard somebody talk about my house is haunted by the ghost of a midget? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. I mean, I mean, what if, what if, what if they think it's a kid, but it's really a midget? Yeah, that's. I was getting ready to uh, actually say that. What if they're mistaken? And don't give me that shit about you got to call them dwarves or little people. Fuck that. <laughs> when I came up, they were midgets. <laughs> Munchkins. That is, how, that is how I know you as a midget. You're a fucking midget. You know we're not politically correct here on the Paris Campus because you know what? There's too much of that soft bullshit going around. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the word midget. Yes, yeah. There's, there could be worse. Mid That's right. Midget's nothing. You want to get mad? Come try to kick me with your little legs. Bobby Bop Gill. Okay. Fucking Willow. Anyway. <laughs> you are great. Okay. The Come on, Peck. Peck. <laughs> God, good. Good one. <laughs> that's uh, a Mad Mardigan reference. That's Look right. That's right. And uh, what else did I want to mention before we go? Oh, apparently, 
And this is going to come as a real shocker to the paranormal community, so you may want to sit down for this one. Uh -huh. We believe that the Walking Horse Hotel in War Trace, Tennessee may be closed down. <gasps> now, you've seen it on TV. We've been there. We've investigated there. Uh, somebody we know tried to contact them, and uh, numbers are disconnected. Numbers not working anymore. Now, can I say I'm shocked? No. Not really. But the tragedy of it is, there's actual activity there. Yeah, of which I was thinking it might be a good time to hit up. <laughs> yeah, we may need to sneak off to War Trace, Tennessee and break in. I'll hit when we know there's no weird cultists living there anymore. <laughs> yeah, any squatters hanging around in there. Or With their weird pizza business. Or n nude meth models. Uh, yeah, which you guys already know that story. If not, we'll have to refresh your memory. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. So, but with that, the show's already running late, and oh. we don't want to talk to y'all anymore. Okay, <laughs> yeah, one more, one more dick slap. There it is, out to all the people. in the Because there's more and more people coming in from the UK. Yeah, I'm sure you're having fun watching us Americans while we're going through. Have fun. Have fun yeah, with your little show. Yeah, Brexit can kiss our ass. <laughs> Look what do we got going on now? Eat shit. <laughs> we said, oh, yeah, you're going to fuck shit up? We're going to fuck it up more. We're going to top that in my eyes. It's the American mm. way. <laughs> so with that, ladies and gentlemen of the Skeptoid family, I am Dalton. I'm Wade. And we will see you on the next podcast. As usual, it's been your pleasure. <laughs> and none of ours. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. We understand they had a lot in common with their cousin Skunk Ape. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>